Hey, this is Retired Geek Woman with Adventures with Rhiannon, Ken Seed, part number 26. And I just love that intro there. And the first thing we do, I always like the fireplace. I don't, even in the summertime, I don't know why. Uh, we also sent off our husband to go adventuring, in this case fishing in Tirnanog, and send him off. Uh, I don't like the duration. He goes up at 6 a.m. He does not get back to 1 a.m. And I, I hate that because it kind of uh, counteracts. Someone on the Discord channel was explaining that it doesn't hurt your relationship. It doesn't matter that they don't sleep. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, it says adults need to sleep, whatever it is, six hours or something. So I don't like that. I, I really wish that it was more of a normal workday type thing. Um, so that when I come back home, he's there or coming home soon. But 1 a.m. is kind of ridiculous when you send him out at 6. So I might make a suggestion uh, on the Discord channel. By the way, hello, welcome to my channel. I've got a lot of new subscribers and it's so good to see all of you. Just a couple of quick things here while we're getting started is that this is a retired slow play, which means that I'm retired and I enjoy my games nice and slow. I don't power game, I don't min max, I enjoy the games. It does not mean that I don't try to play efficiently, I do, but I'm not going to do everything the fastest. For instance, this is the 26th episode and I've seen playthroughs by this episode, they're friends with every single person in the game and they've you know, done most of the content. So I am not going to play that way. I play to enjoy the games that I play. So. Um, my, my whole purpose of showing you these games is because I've enjoyed them or I will enjoy them and I want to share that uh, joy with you so that you might be interested in playing them too. Maybe. <laughs> or you can just watch and see what I do. So uh, I show you my mistakes that I make sometimes because I don't want you to make the same ones and uh, so, and I show you my joy in these games that just absolutely delight me. And this is one of those games that has absolutely delighted me and grabbed my interest uh, like very few games have before. It came out this first week of December of 2022. I bought it the first week of December of 2022 and I have been loving it since. Um, I'm doing a, a number of playthroughs and it's so hard to get back to the other ones because I want to play this all the time. <laughs> but going back to my channel real quick, I do have a, um, co a community tab there. On the community tab will be announcements, things that I need to tell everyone as a group. It's hard to be able to uh, talk to everyone at the same time if you're all not listening to me on the videos. Uh, oh, got a digit for the secret box. Talk about that in a minute. Uh, so check the community tab for announcements, uh, videos. I sometimes put pictures of my of my cats and uh, other things that you need to know. There's also an about uh, tab, and that has my schedule on it, my upload schedule. Currently, I am uploading uh, Stardew Valley on Mondays and Fridays and Kinseed on Wednesdays, all at 11 a.m. American Eastern Time. So check those out. And my I do have plans for these playthroughs. It's not just playing willy-nilly. I have a plan here in place. Kinseed is kind of unique in that when I turn 50 then I can um, um, what I do is basically live on in one of my heirs. So um, that is kind of a to me it's a unique kind of thing. I, I don't know that I've ever played a game that is like that. Um, so the comparison between this and Stardew Valley is that your character never ages and they just continue on into infinity. With this game you stop at 50 years of age and at that point you basically take over the body of one of your heirs and that's now you and the rest of your family goes away. It's a very interesting mechanism which I don't know very much about and I my goal is to at least get that far. So there's ways of, there's lots of ways of doing that. I can play out the 50 years or I can um, trade for items from that evil fair, fair weather who will give you some really useful idol, items and trade for years of your life. So I will be doing that at some point. We'll talk about it more when we get to it. And um, so what I've been doing here lately is I'm trying to make best friends with everybody in the Vale. That's one of the havens. There are many havens and when you next time you see the map you'll see all the different 
places that there are. There are locations within the havens and the Vale. Um, this is uh, Kennewich Village that's in the Vale, which is one of the havens. So I started off making good friends with everybody in the Vale first. I'm trying not to go outside of that area. I'm not spending any, you know, very much time in any of those other places. I will sometimes, but um, for the most part, I just, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make friends with all of these guys first. So that's why I went down to Testy Acres and, and saw the, whatever their names are, the Grumpies or the Scrumpies. They're kind of grumpy people. Um, I'm also giving gifts to people that are already best friends because if we, what you saw when I was at the, at the Crumpies, uh, that one of them gave me a code to the chest that they have. Not all families have chests, many do. And if you, once you make full friends with them, if you keep giving them items, then eventually they're gonna give you a code to a chest somewhere located either in their house or on the property. And at that point, you get to open the chest and you get some really cool stuff. Our first chest in a, in a much previous episode, you have to go back and look for it, was the Browns. And I made best friends with Arthur Brown, and I did a special task for him, which is what they do. And when I did that special task, he gave me all of the code to their chest. And inside of it were some either four or five, I think there were five star um, uh, rainbow mushroom. It's like, holy crud, that was pretty cool. So you get some special items, some recipes, and different things that you can't get any other way. I hired Ned Scrumpy, by the way, uh, to work at my shop because um, that was that was his final quest. It's like once you finish friendship levels, some of them have a, a special last quest they ask, and he requested to be hot for me to hire him, which apparently he knew I owned a shop. And so I hired him on the fish shop and gave him a shift there, and we'll see how he does. He says he's a hard worker, and he's, he said he was cheap and a hard worker, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, so I decided to try him out and see how he does. Who knows? You know, if he's a good employee, we'll put him anywhere. So I tend to micromanage my shops, as you can see. I, um, I gather as much resource. I'm not really good at gathering resources, but anytime I stop by here, I try to add resources to, um, not resources, ingredients to the inventory here at the shop. And Teresa Brown, she just doesn't seem happy, and I don't know why I'm paying her as much as I can. I didn't think I was overworking her, but she just doesn't seem very happy. And I read that if you give them gifts when they're working, then it can help their attitudes. So we'll see if that makes any difference. Um, so anyway, that I checked both shops. I went to um, this one shop down below is the general store and I'm using it as a fish market and eventually we are going to specialize and make it a fish market. And supposedly when you do that, then there are people are more likely to buy fish, which at this point they can't really buy anything else in my shop. And um, they generally will come in the mornings and it kind of, you know, it just makes it specialized. And since I love fishing so much, I thought that would be a great first choice for my general store is to make it a fish market. And as you saw, it wasn't making a ton of money yet, but it is making a profit and I am getting reputation which is all good. That, that's really the, that's why I have it in the first place. My apothecary, if you saw that earlier, is making good money and good reputation. And it just keeps going up and up. The more remedies that I make myself and the higher ingredients those remedies are, so the more quality ingredients those are, my reputation goes up faster and I make a lot more money, a lot more money. So uh, only I had a number of goals here in the beginning. One was that I could start a family, and I've done that. And one is that I could be a shop owner, a successful shop owner, and I'm doing that. Now my next goal here is to make friends with all of the people in the Vale, and I'm doing that one person at a time. You can talk to them directly, or you can just go right to their mailboxes and drop stuff off uh, for all of the family members. Here's this little guy here. I think that's Clay Teapot. And yeah, I'm not quite best friends with him. I don't show any likes or dislikes, so hopefully I won't lose any friends. Oh my gosh, I've had some really bad experiences. It's like you can see I'm getting 9, 10, 11 uh, points, uh, friendship points, when I give people gifts. But if you give them something they dislike, you lose 61 friendship points. 61. Can you believe that? By the way, that guy just told me she likes carrots. Didn't know that. Now I do. Now she'll get carrots. 
those relationships will go up really fast. Um, and some of these, I'm not reading the dialogue through all of here. There's so much of it and it's so fun. Um, sometimes they give you very useful information. Uh, they give you rating tips on things that you might be looking for. Let's see how we do here. Please let this be good. Yeah, you can see that strawberry he dislikes. That's because in a previous episode I gave Isaiah Green a strawberry and lost 61 friendship points. Go back and look at that. In the title of the the to the title of the video, I believe I put how to trash a relationship or something like that. So go back and watch that. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So obviously Copper doesn't like blueberries. I think that was another relationship trash. Oh my heavens. There are wikis that are starting to come up, but not a ton. This game hasn't been out that long. Um, it's a relatively uh, not a very well known game. It's kind of taken a while for those wikis to get fleshed out. And um, so I'm, I have put a couple of links to them. The main wiki, which is the one on the developer page, can only be updated by the developers. Well, they don't have a whole lot of time. They are continuing to approve this game. There's updates coming. There's new things coming. And because of that, the developers don't really have an opportunity to uh, get that wiki updated very much and uh, that's a homestone by the way each home has one it shows you who lives in it and what your relationship with them is and also if you have permission to take their stuff <laughs> so eventually if you get a high enough friendship with the members of that household then you can take their stuff um, so anyways uh, there is a fandom wiki and um, that one's okay I've, I've used it a couple times it, it's coming along looking for John Brown. I want to make best friends with him. I want his chest. It's right there in his house. I don't have to go search for it. Other links that I have in my descriptions uh, for Kinseed specifically is I do have the official Kinseed page, which is where they put all kinds of information about the game, about the updates and things, you know, where they're going and, and things like that. Then really the most important thing I want you to see is the official Discord channel. The devs are on that official Discord channel. They do answer questions. There's place for making suggestions. There's lots of places to ask questions. And there's people out there more than happy to answer your questions for you. Uh, nice group of folks. I've, they really helped me quite a bit. And a lot of these people, again, are power gamers and have gone through all of this content. So when I find something I need help with, I reach out to them and a lot of them already know. There's a number of, there's only one other person that kind of plays like I do, and they're still kind of plugging along, playing at their own re relaxed pace. Uh, most people, though, have been through all, right, all the way through this content, and they can help you out. There are updates coming, and um, depending upon an update, we're going to see how it goes. Oh, she likes strawberries and strawberry jam. And why I gave that to her, I don't know. I really wasn't paying attention. Um, there is going to be an update coming that may require a restart. And if I do that, what I will do is I'll restart it and just play it up to where I'm at here and just continue on. And it'll be the same. Look, my character will be the same. My name will be the same. Everything will look the same. And I'll let you know if and when that happens. Uh, the devs has, have said that it, a restart would give you let you be able to um, enjoy all of the new content that's coming. After that, there's another update coming. And that, not the current update that's almost on the horizon, but the one after that is supposedly you can purchase a tavern. Uh, right now, you can only purchase blacksmith, apothecary, and a general store. But soon, we'll be able to purchase a tavern. So I'm really glad that they are making updates to the game still. Um, I was so shocked when, I think it was a year and a half ago, that Stardew Valley did a 1.5 update and it added new characters, new landmass, new tasks, new quests, new dungeons, new items, just I couldn't believe the amount of stuff. So, and that means that they're still developing it after seven years. Well, I'm grateful to know that they're gonna to continue to develop, develop this game, but it's gonna need support. So if you like this game, if you like what you're seeing and you wanna play it, support them, buy it. Um, I did, <laughs> and it's just been a joy, an absolute joy. So get, watch for it to go on sale. I mean, if you don't want to pay full price. So this is the map I was telling you about. You can see, you can't tell. What I don't like about it is I can't tell where the havens are. There's, it doesn't tell me that, the, where did I go to? Come on, come on, it's going to show me. 
It'll tell me where I'm at. Yeah, I'm in Poppy Hill. It doesn't tell me what, where Poppy Hill is. What haven is it? So I, I don't like that. I have to go to the wiki to see that. That I didn't even know these were called havens until I went to the wiki and saw, oh, okay, the Vale is a haven. Tirnanog is a haven. And then it, if you go into those havens, you can find out which, lo they call them locations or cities, are in those. Oh, look at this. Look what you do with your fishing rod. Oh, yeah. Got myself a proverb right there. So I don't, I don't like it that you can't see it on the screen. I, I don't want to have to go to a wiki to find out that these are called havens and then there's locations within the havens. I think that should be um, said somewhere else. And maybe it was and I just missed it. It's absolutely possible that I did. A lot of the books and things, I haven't been reading them and it may have told me in there. And the books go in my inventory and stay there. Um, I saw him... What did he want? Sometimes if they got something, no, I'm not going to do any of these. Any of these quests that are negative, that would do something negative to somebody, I'm not going to do that. I work too hard for those relationships. If someone says, hey, I want to fish or something, if they request it, then I will. I came up here for other reasons. I'm not here necessarily to make friends with people. If I see somebody that I've not met before, I may introduce myself. Uh, campfires, you could camp at a campfire and it saves your game right there. So they're working on other ways. It used to be you could only... Uh, save a game if you went to sleep at six and woke up at six o'clock in the morning. So now it automatically saves at six o'clock and um, you can save at these campfires and things. I think there's other ways coming or they're changing it to make it easier, but it's one save. You can't do a basically a save as. You can't do that with this game. Um, you may have noticed in the beginning if I showed it, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I do have other saves. Well, there's reasons for that. I, my first save, it wasn't, I didn't do very good because I didn't know some basic things. So it was kind of testing it out. So then I went, started another save and I started playing it. And then I thought, this needs to be shared with my YouTube folks. So anything that I'd love, any game that I'd love, I'm going to share it with you one way or the other. It may take a while till I get around to it. Um, but this is a mine, by the way. I don't go in mines very often, so enjoy it while you can. Told in the hole. As you can see, I don't even read it. I can go back and read these books later. So if I'm looking for some information, I can go pull the books up and look. Um, so anyway, um, I'm glad I got that book, but also Sleeper's Zest Recipe. Awesome. And again, I don't do mines much. I don't enjoy mining in this game. Uh, the Apothecary seems to be what I'm enjoying the most. And Look at this. This took me to the shoe, which I don't think I've been here. <laughs> this is, no, I haven't even clicked on this yet. That's the goddess stone. You have to click on them once. It, this is where you come from. Uh, this is where that Uncle Bill comes and gets you. And this is just a little area here. It looks real interesting. I've never been here before. This is 26 episodes and, oh, Mrs. Foster. Oh my. <laughs> Come back anytime you need children. So uh, obviously I'm having my own children with my husband, but if I didn't want to, I can come to the shoe and adopt them. And um, so that's the old woman who lives in a shoe and that's how you can get children. I loved it that I found this goddess statue. I didn't know it was here and I didn't know, hadn't been to that place before. So that was cool. That was a nice little adventure I shared with you. So the old woman who lived in the shoe, she had so many children, she didn't know what to do. That's an old children's story. I don't know where it comes from, but I remember hearing it as a child, so I don't know where it came from. And who do we have here? It's Boots. Yeah, let's see. I'm still trying to get Boots chest numbers, and I'll give him a love blueberry. No problem. So lovely stuff. And, oh, a digit to my family box is five. It's like, oh, awesome. Family box is actually in his house. So let's see how many numbers. Oh, we only missing one number. So when that is the case, you can go ahead and guess at the numbers. Attempt it. That wasn't it. You can see the first number is wrong still. And it says it scrambles it. But it's still, the other numbers are the same. So you can, so when I get two of the numbers, then I just start guessing because there's, I mean, you only have 10 options, right? So we are going, so it's, I started at one, two, three, four. So I just keep going. I only have to do it 10 times at the most. 
So it says it's going to scramble it. So, But it doesn't to discover again. It doesn't do that. So I had heard that or heard that you shouldn't do this because it re-scrambles them. But I, it doesn't. So I don't know if that's a bug. I don't know if it was just misinformation. Um, so all you have to do is just keep trying. Now, nine didn't work. I went through all the numbers. So you know what? It was zero. It was zero. <laughs> Candlewitch Green. A recipe for Candlewitch Green. So this is a recipe that's much healthier than Soylent Green. Oh my gosh. That's a flashback to an old movie. Heaven's sakes. I absolutely love the references to things like that um, in the real life. I've seen references to the music group The Beatles. I mean, I mean, I don't know how old these people are that are uh, created this game, but oh my gosh, it's so funny. Soul It Green's a very old movie. Uh, the Beatles, obviously, were in the 60s, but I love the references. Let's see, how did we do today? We made 63. We made uh, 129 on, 128 on day four. That's after paying employees. And so I'm kind of looking here. At, Teresa's still unhappy. Um, you don't want to overwork your people. You don't want to have them working, for instance, two or three shifts at a time. Um, they need days off. So, um, you know, it's good to have more employees and have them... Uh, uh, spread out the work basically um, occasionally we'll order inventory I wasn't able to get more bowing Nancy right now what I'm doing is I'm checking my inventory and making note of it so I have a Microsoft OneNote sheet that I keep inventory on I've talked about this a lot but I haven't shown you all uh, this is my OneNote for Kinseed, and as you can see what I did is I did all of the possible remedies that I can make, and then I did an inventory of what do I have, how many do I have of them, so that when I go back to my station, I don't have to go back and forth. So this is kind of what it looks like. I do have uh, notebooks for each game that I play that needs notes. So I did want to show this. I never have. I've only talked about it for I don't know how long. But that's how I keep track of what I'm doing. So sometimes when there's a pause, I'm trying to cut out my pauses and things. I'll be going back and forth, updating my sheet, and then I'll go back to the back and make remedies based on what do I have and what do I need. So that's kind of how I keep track of, of my thing. And whenever this starts, uh, when I start having, you know, this thing almost full of remedies, then it, it even is more important to be able to keep track and keep organized. So that's not how I organize. I just wanted to show you all that because I've been talking about it forever. By the way, I wanted to let you know the secret word of the day is inventory. So please use the word inventory down in the comments. Be creative. Do not say the, the secret word is inventory. Use it in a creative sentence. Play along with me. Come on. I've seen this done on other channel and I loved it because I participated. So I want you to use the word inventory down in the comments and be creative. So once I figured out uh, what I had on my shelf and once I figured out I pull up my recipe book and look at the ingredients that I have, I want you to know I am not optimized at all on those require proverbs and it takes forever to find all the 900 plus proverbs so uh, right now I'm relying on the ingredient sheet to find out what the attributes are so I can figure out what I can make and some of the ingredients some of the attributes are things that I don't have access to not at this part of the game anyway one thing I really need, need to get on to is to do a lot more uh, scavenging of items. I really need to do that because I don't have a lot of the ingredients that I could find myself. So it's very expensive to order them at this point and it does take out of your profit so I don't want to uh, cut into my profit too terribly much. And so I got a couple of quests here. Quests help your uh, relationship, friendship points with people. They also, uh, come on out of there, the other thing that they do um, is that here's another task and he wanted he wants a couple things but a gummy mushroom and I have a gummy mushroom 
So it does a number of things. You do get friendship points, but you also get, look at that, I don't need 31 friendship points with uh, Jeremy Smith, but I'll take them. I will also take the 20 reputation points. That is important. You can see that I'm almost halfway through uh, level four, which is journeyman. And uh, let's see, I need to, oh, I need to cure strain, huh? Okay, some interesting little things I gotta do. I wanna cure strain. So I can go back to the apothecary if I remembered it and go do that. So I'm always like, there's so many things to do. And I could be running around, out, you know, it, you can really get uh, sidetracked on all of the things that you're doing. I do not like to have my task list filled up so much that I have to scroll to see it. So I'm really working at making sure that my quest list is cleaned out as much as possible. And um, one thing I also wanted to mention, not only can you give gifts to people in their mailboxes, you can turn in quest items too. And it you get the same amount of friendship points and the same amount of reputation. So those mailboxes are amazing. I love them. Um, that's one thing that I don't care about Stardew Valley as far as trying to find people. You got to look on a wiki to where to find people. Oh, there's a, f a frail, frail effigy. So that's cool. It goes to Betty Scrumpy, so that's going to help our relationship. So again, I, that was one thing I didn't like because sometimes you couldn't find people. You have to go to the wiki and find out where they are. And so it was kind of a pain. But these mailboxes, once you figure out where everybody lives, uh, then you can just go right to their mailbox. And once you have met somebody, then they show up on the mailbox of the house they live in. So after you go around, like I know right down south, or right where I was just at is the Brown family. And uh, the uh, kettles are right, right next to them. And the greens are above there. So you, you kind of figure out where they are after a very short period of time. And then you can go catch them and put things in their mailbox. I love that feature. It's a big time saver. And if you're trying to make friends, it's a real fast way to do that. Just run around to all the mailboxes in, now, in town. And now what does Ichabon Moon want? Fishing skills. He wants a river trout. I think I have one. You can click on it right then and find out. Yes, if it's grayed out, I don't. But I did have one. So, yeah. Okay. There you go. And he says, thanks. Spot on. I get, I get friendship points. I got some brass out of the deal. And uh, see ya. <laughs> So he was happy, I was happy, everybody's happy. Saving up my money, we need 3,000 to specialize our fish, our, uh, our general store to a fish market. And so that's gonna be a big expenditure. When I do that, I don't wanna be completely out of money. So I'll probably make sure that I have more than 3,000 saved up before I make that little venture to uh, the special location where we do that. And we'll see that coming up soon, coming up soon, okay. Let's go see. Uh, by the way, you can give people gifts when they're asleep, which is kind of funny. Betty Scrumpy uh, dropped this uh, frell effigy, and she was very happy. Thank you. That's just at 14 brass. We need the money and 15 relationship points, all uh, reputation points. So, oh my gosh, that was a really good thing. And we had already given her a gift that day. So we got friendship, twice, friendship points for her twice. Once is doing a task for her and once of giving her a gift. So we are making very good progress and um, but at a really great relaxed slow pace. It's like oh yeah I had to stop by here. I always buy the pork chops and the drumsticks. Um, that's chicken drumsticks and a pig pork chop. So uh, you can't, I was going the wrong way, you can um, get the chicken drumsticks and the pork chops another way but i prefer to uh there's three different ways i prefer the easy way which is to buy them from the traveling trader so when i see them i pick it up you never know when you're going to need them and i just pick it on up when i get to my farm and it's about this time of night then um i want to check my pond to see if i got any fish in it and i'm really looking for moonfish there we go. I love the moonfish. They sell really well in the shop, and uh, Inkabod loves them, so we can give them to Inkabod too. So we're kind of looking around here. Also, I remember there's up above in the Dreamer's Nook, there's another pond up there, and sometimes I can get moonfish out of that. So we need the moonfish. Also in the Dreamer's Nook is our buddy Twig. That's the master of fishing. And so anytime we get fish to turn in, I want to check with... Uh, twig because I own oh, another moonfish. Yes. Uh, I love it. Uh, I hate it when I 
uh, accidentally sell a fish that I needed to give to Twig. So I'm often, by the way, I turn it on to see if there's fish in here. I turn it off and then I have this thing. I really think that the light affects the fish. And I haven't proved that, but I really think that it does. Okay, weed skimmers, whatever. I don't need weed skimmers. Uh, so every once in a while, I'll run into, run into Twig. I hate it when I sell the fish that I needed, that I could have used to give Twig. Uh, it's midnight, and and within the next hour, which is coming up, you can see the time moving along on my very special clock that I got from Fairweather. Um, he will be um, our hubby will be home at one o'clock. Getting gifts from people, so cool. Let's see. Oh, a recipe. Sundown, uh, something something from Jeremy and Betty Scrumpy is sending me what? A proverb. Yes, I love it. And there's a fishing competition. Really? Where? Let's see, uh, competition, da, 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 da. gray market on the 12th of winter. So when there's these competitions and things like that, they're a really good idea to participate if you can. It put it and see it put that note on my thing now. So I know it's on the 12th fishing competition and it's at the gray market before three o'clock. There's a lot of reasons to do this. I, in my first playthrough when I was testing things out, I didn't. And then I was watching other people participate and I thought, oh my gosh, you get reputation points and you get prizes. Even if you don't uh, win the competition, you get prizes. So um, I think it's a really good idea to, to participate in these competitions. So hopefully I've got some good fish. You, it basically, it's a matter of stars and uh, variety. So in, you get to put in three items. I want three different fish, one o'clock, Ash is home. One o'clock, um, yes. You want three different fish as high as star quality as you can. I want to check and see what he brought home. Look at all the goodies. Oh, and he increased. So now he can get up to three star items, which I'm looking for some three star turninog fish. So that's why I've been sending him. That's going to be the end of our day and the end of our episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not done so, please subscribe to my channel. Give my video a like if you think it's something that it's worthwhile to you. Please make your comments down below. But the most important thing is I want you to have a wonderful rest of your day.